precious spirit of God, we thank you for the day. We give you praise and we thank you for your presence once again. Lord, we come to you in prayer that today let the word of the Lord enter into heart and permeate into every heart. Even as we begin this series titled The Concept of Christianity, Lord, we believe that the truth is one and we cannot have double truth. And we believe that that truth is in your son, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, let the world know this truth. Let it be a light in their heart. I pray, let every heart that hear this word be enlightened and illumined, not just with knowledge that puffs up, but knowledge that inspire action. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right, people of God, you're welcome to today's um, episode. We are actually starting a new series from today. And the title is The Concept of Christianity. Now, I, I really love this title. I really love this particular series that we are going to do because of the details that you're going to have. I'm telling you, this is loaded. It's going to be packed. It's going to be wonderful. And we are trusting God that you are going to also share it around. And your Muslim friends, uh, if you have Hindus, if you have atheists, and all these guys, they are going to be blessed as well. And we are trusting God that as you do so, salvation is going to hit to a lot of people. You know, let me first of all appreciate you, all you who have taken upon yourself to share our videos, to talk to people about it. You're doing an, an, a wonderful job. We, we've, we've, we've seen great um, views on our YouTube channels. I'm telling you, you don't know how you're blessing lives. You, you're changing lives. That's what it means. Because if I preach and you don't share it, if you don't invite somebody to come and subscribe, to come and like and all of that, it's not going to work. So you also are part of this. And I'm telling you, heaven is proud of you. Heaven is proud of you. God bless you so much. You have no idea a blessing you are to the world thank you so much all right so the concept of christianity i think you're ready for this you get your bible your notebook and your pen with your eyes open to watch all right so we're going to use first timothy chapter 2 verse 4 and 5 and um, that's going to be our theme scripture for this study all right let's look at what is there first timothy chapter 2 verse 4 and 5 downwards all right Okay, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? All right, I think it'll be better. Let me do the three. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Now, underline that word, God our Savior. Who will have all men saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? Glory. For there is one God. Now, I hope you get this. For there is one God. And one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time, where whereunto I'm ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ, and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles, in faith and in verity. Now this is very important. You see, the concept of Christianity. I I want us to actually understand the world view this is what um, um, theologians call it the world view of Christianity I mean what is our concept what is the concept of Christianity what 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 is Christianity all about you know people think when we talk about Christians we're talking about people who, who worship on Sundays and some worship on Saturdays and all of that you know so they think Christianity is just one of the religions of the world so we, we we have islamic religion we have christian religion we have confucianism we have um shintoism hinduism and all of those stuff so christianity is, is the largest religion of the world all right so but that is not what christianity is about the concept of christianity is is summed up in the verses that are read to you all right from the verse 3, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. First of all, 
Christianity introduces God as Savior. Now, this is big. I'm telling you, this is big. It is big because when you look at the worldview of all the religions of the world, worldview here means the, the presuppositions, the, the concept, the concept of religions, right? When you look at Islam, Islam believes that God, you know, the word Islam, the word Islam actually means submission, all right? It means submission, to submit. And Muslim, a Muslim is one who submits himself to God, to Allah, right? So Islam is submission. And that is where their worldview actually comes from. It means that man subjecting himself under God, all right? And that's why I believe, that's why they pray with their faces bowed down as a sign that they are humbling themselves before God. You, you get the point. And that is the worldview. So Islam believes that for you to go to paradise, for you to enjoy paradise, you need to make sure your good works outweighs your bad works. Because they believe that when God, when, when the world ends, God is going to measure our good works as against our bad works. So if your good works outweighs your bad works, then you will enjoy paradise. If your bad works outweighs your good works, then you go to hell. All right. There are a lot of people who think Christians and Muslims worship the same God. Now, in this study, I'm going to take my time to explain to you that is not so. It is not so at all. So Islam, the, Islam does not present God as a savior. No, they present God as the maker of everything. Islam believed that God is the originator of everything. Everything is sourced from God. God created everything. That's what they believe, all right? And they picked that belief from the Bible. And so we can say they are right in some sense. They believe that. And then they believe, like I told you, when it comes to salvation, they believe that it is dependent on man. Now, they believe that God created Adam. They believe God made Eve. They believe that Adam disobeyed God. They don't believe that what Adam did became sin that passed on all men. You get it? They believe, in, in, they believe that Adam repented and so God forgave Adam. And that is why Adam, they refer to Adam as the first prophet. All right, they believe God forgave Adam. Now, this is their concept. This is this is their worldview. So, they believe for you to be saved, like I told you, not even saved per se. They don't have the word saved. They have forgiveness. They have uh, um, you being in paradise and stuff like that. Now, that is their worldview. You have to do good. And that's why they have the five pillars of their faith, all right? The, the pillars of their faith and all of those stuff. They, they do zakat and... Uh, the rest, they give alms, zakat, they pray five times a day, and they do all kinds of things. This they do to prove or to, to in, in anticipation and expectation to receive salvation as they have been taught by their prophet who is um, Muhammad, all right? This book unveils in accuracy the identity of the God-man Jesus. The truths carefully hewn from God's word concerning Jesus will enlighten the believer and cause him to rest in the surety of Jesus being the savior of his life. Who was Jesus? His name is mentioned in all circles of life, yet without accurate knowledge of who he is. Knowing Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection sets one for the Christian life. This book can be used for Bible study in all Christian groups, in campuses, youth groups, and many more. Dare to grab a copy of this shepherd's stuff. Kindly call these numbers to order for a copy now. Plus 233-54-039-2085 or plus 233-55-77-32706. Thank you. Right. Great. When you... There, there are other world views as well. I'm not going to go into. I'm, I'm not going to go deep into that. We have the pantheistic world view. The pantheistic world view. Um, um, I will summarize it this way. They believe everything is God, and God is everything. So they believe all the things, all creation, the things that we see. Uh, they are they are an expression of God. They are an expression of God. So 
God is everything. God is your light. God is your car. God is your laptop. God is everything. All right. Now, this is what they believe. Some religions like the Confucianists and um, uh, Hinduism and so forth and so on, they believe that, that God is not a definite being. Unlike Islam, Islam believe God God is a definite being. Christians believe God is a definite being. Um, they don't believe God is a definite being. They believe God is God is the concept of the world. I mean, everything we see is God, and God is everything we see. All right. Now that is that is kind of very stupid, you know. All right, it doesn't make sense. All right. Christianity is very different. I'm telling you, and those of you who are students, I would want you to go and study this. It's very different. Christianity, unlike Islam, Islam preaches man subjecting himself to God. Christianity is different. Christianity actually brings a savior. Christianity is God is a savior. And this is what every single person must know. That God is a savior. Now, this is where the false religions are separated from Christianity. Now, let's read that again. He says that for, um, he says, who will have all men to be saved? Verse 3, sorry. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. Muhammad never preached God as a Savior. He preached God, Allah, as the originator of all things. In Christianity, we preach God as Savior. What is the concept of Christianity? Christianity proposes that Man was made by God and God, actually God made everything and brought man in the world, made man in the world, placed man in the garden and God gave man everything except one particular tree, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, I, I, I don't have time, I would have explained to you why you cannot see the garden of Eden anywhere in the world, all right? This is a revelation as well. Now, so God told man not to eat, and man ate of that tree. Now, when man ate of that tree, man was driven away from the presence of God. I think I explained that in our previous video, what death is about. So you can go back and watch that and come and continue. Man died, and when man died, he, his death was a separation from the presence of God. Now, sin... We, get, we got to know sin became inherent, all right? Sin now dwelled in man, dwelt in man. So man, man passed sin on to his generations. This is called original sin. And this sin is different from what we see people do. I wish I can have like five hours to teach this. But anyway, we're going to do that um, um, consequently as we, as we move on. This sin actually is not fornication, it's not robbery, it's not gossiping, it's not, the, um, it's not stealing, it's not uh, 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 homosexuality, lesbianism and stuff like that. This sin is something that is the, it, 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 it's a now, it's a parent, all right? And all these sins, fornication, stuff like that, they are the fruits of the original sin. So... We Christians, we believe that that sin actually was transferred to all the generation of men. You, let, me, let, me, let me help you with this. Romans chapter number 5. Romans 5 verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. So by one man, that man is Adam. By the sin of Adam... But by the disobedience of Adam, sin entered into the world. Now, then he says that, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. Can you think, can you think about that? But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that have not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression who is the figure of him that was to come but not as the offense so also is the free gift for if through the offense of one many be many be dead much more the grace of god and the gift by grace which by one man jesus christ 
which is by one man Jesus Christ and abounded unto many, and not as it and not as it was by one that sin, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one man to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Listen, for if by one man's offense death reigned, so you see, it's from one man to others, from one man to many, from one man to many, from one man to many. So when Adam sinned, it affected the human race. It affected everybody. It affected everybody. Now, that means the sin of Adam brought death. I explained that in our previous video, like I said. The sin of Adam brought death to everybody. Whether you ate of it or you didn't eat of it, you, may, you were made a sinner. All right? Whatever Adam ate, whatever fruit it was, you know, some people say it's apple. It's not an apple. It's, it's not apple. All right. Else, no, it's not an apple. So every single person became a sinner because of one disobedience of Adam. All right. Now, I remember in one of our videos, I said Adam was the father of creation. What that means is that he was the source. All of us uh, received our traits from him. So when he received sin, or when he became sin, or when he sinned, it affected his generations. Now, look at it. You see, the other, other concept, other worldviews, Islam and the rest, they don't help the situation at all. A man out of it, and everybody became a sinner. And everybody died. That is what the word of God tells us. Alright? And when everybody died god made plan so to speak for this study to rescue man and in the rescue of man god actually began the rescue right from genesis he began from there in 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 the rescue of man we can even see that in the prophecy that he gave but i'm not going to go into it i just want to lay the foundation and then we are going to ascend from our next videos all right so christianity brings to bear that the problem that man brought upon humanity finally god as the savior has come to rescue this is very important very very important because man in his in his own self cannot work his way out to god you you, you see people try to please god people try to do good things to please god it's good to do good things all right, but man in himself cannot do good things to please God. No, why? Because there is a fundamental problem. There is a root problem that must be dealt with. There is a root problem that must be dealt with. And man in himself has no ability to bring that solution. You get the point? Man cannot, unlike what, what Islam teaches, that if you're if you're able to subject yourself to god enough if you're able to do good enough if you're able to do this enough if you're able to do this enough all right no unlike the pantheistic view which is more crazier where god is everything everything is god so you see god in trees you see god in water you see god in everything and everything is god and god is everything no you see but this is that god is a savior he comes at the, primarily, you know, all, all of them see them as God. And this is why Christianity is not a religion. It's not a religion in the sense that all religions believe in a supreme being. So we say religion is simply the belief in a supreme being. Christianity is not a belief in God. Let me, I, I'm, I'm going to say that again. Christianity is not the belief in god in christianity we believe in god but christianity is not the belief in god so that is religion religion is to believe in a supreme being and then subject yourself under that supreme being so the traditionalists believe in a supreme being who created everything all right um, um islam believe in the supreme being allah who created everything uh, uh, the pantheistic people also believe that God is a force somewhere who created everything. 
but Christianity is not belief in God. No. Christianity is God has come to rescue men from sin. Get it straight. It is Christianity is not we are going to church. It's not, oh, now I'm a church goer. Oh, actually, now I have changed my ways. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The things I used to say, I say them no more. Now, praise the Lord. I'm a Christian. I'm so holy. I'm so holy. No, that's not what it is. Christianity is that God has come to save. Now, I'm going to teach a bit of hard things in this series. Get this particular one. Christianity is that God has come to save man. God has come to save man. He says that this is acceptable in the eyes of God, our Savior. Then look at the continuation. Let's get back there. He says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. So it tells us God's heart. All right? This is the revelation of Christianity. It's, it, it's this. God wants all men to be saved. Hence, he is called God our Savior. That means that the ability to have all men to be saved is not in man, but in him. The ability, the, 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 that which brings the salvation for the men that he wants to be saved is not in men. Get it? This is, this is what makes Christianity beautiful. All right? You know, people think that, oh, you don't drink, you don't chase women, you don't steal, then it means that, oh, all right. When, when I, met a, uh, I saw a politician on TV who was bragging, I do good. These this Christians, a lot of them are bogus. I do good. And to me, I don't even go to church, but I do good. And by that, I'll go to heaven. That is the apex of nonsensity. All right? This is it. That is not... That, that is not what Christianity is. It's not I do good. It's not you do good. No. It is he did you good. Christianity is that you cannot save yourself. Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation comes of the Lord. The Lord comes to you with his salvation. Let me tell you. Another thing is this. All the religions of the world, the relationship is like this. From here to here. All right. Men are down and they are seeking to approach God. They are seeking to find God. They are climbing up to get to God. In Christianity, the relationship is like this. Come on. I don't know if you are watching with people, you can do like this. Christianity is God now comes to men. Listen, God revealed that. Christianity was born out of Judaism. All right? We accept that. It is true in some sense, but it is not true in some sense. It depends on how you're going to say it. Now, in God, God's people in Exodus were in, were in slavery. And then God met Moses and God decided. Now, this, 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 this is a revelation, all right? God told Moses, the cry of my people has come to me. Therefore, I am come to save my people. Wow. God says, I am come. I am come to save my people. So, it, 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 it brings to... It brings to our knowledge that it is this way. It is not this way. Man cannot work himself up. Let me show you something. Let me show you. In Genesis, I've got to find this for you. I've got to find this for you. I'm telling you. All right. I've got to find this for you. Let's go to Genesis. All right, okay. Genesis 11. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 down. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make break and burn them through thoroughly. And no, let me take it again. Let me take it again. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make bread and burn them thoroughly. And they had bread for stone and slime, have they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. 
and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to let us down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Now listen, after man had sinned, and man had been sacked, man tried to work himself back to God. How? They said, let us build a tower. Let us build a tower so high. You know what that means? Let us work our way upward. Let us work our way back to God. And God says, it's not like that. We're going to, we, you, you need to be confounded. Because salvation plan is not you coming to me. It's me coming to you. And this, this if you understand this as a preacher, it's going to help you. Nobody pays tight to go to heaven. Nobody pays tight to make it. Nobody, nobody. Is, if you don't come to church, if you don't go to church, you don't make it. If you, if you don't do good, you burn in hell. That is absurd. That is not the message. The message is God has come down to you. All right? This is Christianity. Understand it. Christianity is God the Savior coming down to men to save them. So, the, the world know him to be God. The world know him to be a supreme being. The world know that, oh, let us do this so that we can get to him. Let us build so that we can get to him. Let us do this so that we can get to him. No. Christianity is that God has come to you. This is the concept of Christianity. Understand, this is the concept of Christianity. Christianity is, is, is let, me, let me read something to you quickly. All right. All right, Ephesians chapter number two. Ephesians two. Let me say this. Let's read this. For by grace, verse eight. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves; it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. He says that for by grace you are saved. For by grace you are saved. It is not of your works. What does that mean? It is not of any good that you have done. Now that means the foundation, the primary uh, uh, notion or message of Christianity is that man is incapable of saving himself. Man is incapable. The good that man does, that God, listen, God is too perfect to be satisfied with the good deeds of man because i mean i heard a story where a, a young lady was trying to impress the man so he picked up she picked up all the dirty clothes to do some laundry to wash them and the mom had gone out she washed them washed them very quickly and hanged all of them on the on the dry line and thinking that the mom will come with a very wonderful award now the mother came. He says, Mommy, come see what I've done. I've washed everything. The mom said, What? Who told you to do that? He said, Mom, I washed it. The mom went to the back, back side of the house. He saw and he said, Who told you? Why did you do this? And the mom actually, instead of saying, Oh, Alice, you're well done. He said, The next time you do that again, what I will do to you? Don't do You know why? Because you, you, you have given me extra work. That is how man's best is before God. You cannot please God. This is it. Understand. This is it. There is a guy around this country. Uh, they call them common sense or something like that. They, they, they just pick up Bible verses and they confuse them with their confusion and all of that. You see, they don't understand the message of Christianity. They think Christianity there's a no miracle can happen before me. I say, look at this guy. You're funny. All right. The, 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 the Christian faith is not miracles. Let me say that again. You can tell him so that he can come and be blessed by this video. All right? It's, 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 it's not miracles. It's not even conflicting scriptures. The message is that a savior, God the savior, has come. Hello, precious ones. Allow me to introduce you an amazing book titled The Aggressive Soul Winner. This is a timely book to inspire you to be a fervent soul winner. Soul winning 
as the very wheel on which the expansion of Christianity runs is done with a certain level of contagious fervency, and that is just what this material offers. In studying this book, the lame will walk, the walking will run as chariots, and the running will be caught up by the spirit to do much more. Kindly pre-order for the limited copies available. To order, call plus two three three five four zero three nine two zero eight five or plus two three three five five seven seven three two seven zero six. God richly bless you. That that is it. That is it. God is come. He he has come to his people to offer salvation. That is why, you know, people know God to be a covenant God. God is a covenant. God is my covenant God. I'm covenanting with God. God is a, a, a prayer hearing God. God is a, a, a thunder. God is this. God is that. God is that. No, the primary revelation of who God is in Christianity is that God is a savior. So no matter what a man does, this savior is so perfect that unless he himself saves you, you cannot come to him to save yourself. Man, in fact, understand, man has no legal access to God. Man has no legal access to God. I think I should read something to you in... Um, understand, this is very, very, very critical. Very, very, very critical. Okay, first, first Timothy chapter 6, verse 16. Who only, now he's talking about God, all right? When you read, what, let's read from 14. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his time he shall show who is the blessed and only potent, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. So he tells us who God is. He dwells in an unapproachable light. A light that man does not have the legal access to come into. Alright? So, if you are working your way to God, to where? Because where he dwells, you cannot be there. He, is, he lives in a realm called unapproachable light. Everyone who ever had the revelation, Zechariah, Isaiah, John, who had a revelation to see God. They said, when we saw him, he was in a bright light. When we saw him, he, his countenance was, was more brighter than the sun shining in his strength. When they had all, all these revelations, can you walk there? You can walk there. So God came in the likeness of men to save you. All right? So that is the concept of Christianity. That should tell you that those who think that they can just get saved, they can get saved by good things. They can get saved by doing wonderful things. I mean, they are wrong. Because God is too perfect to be bribed by your good works. He's too perfect. He's too perfect. You need him to save you. You need it. How many, how many of you watching me here can just walk your way? You just get into a palace and you come and say, who brought you here? So I've come. I've come. I've come. I'm a good man in the society. Don't you know God is a king? Don't you know God is a monarch? All right? You can't walk into a king's palace from nowhere. You just go, who are you? I say, I'm, I'm a good man in society. I do good. I do wonderful things. So open the door for me. I've come to stay. It doesn't happen like that. But the king can say, go and bring that fellow. Let him come and live here. That's what God did. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Oh, glory to God. Whosoever believes in him, whosoever believes in him, he comes to you with salvation. He comes to you to save you. And this is the reality of the Christian faith. This is the concept. God has come to men. To give and offer to them salvation for free. Salvation that man's action couldn't buy. Salvation that man's uh, uh, piosity couldn't buy. He came with it and he says, it's given to you for free. Only believe in Jesus Christ. This is where we are going to end today's session. This is just an introduction. We, have, we are going to have a whole lot of study 
about this matter. Thank you for watching. You are blessing. If you're if you're listening to me and you're not born again, come on, pray this prayer with me. Thank you, Father, for your word. This day with my heart, I confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord over my life. He died for me and he was buried and was raised for me. I will worship him all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for giving me salvation. I declare I'm born again. I'm born again forever. I'm saved today and I'm saved forever. Thank you for giving me salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, we, we, like I said, we are going to continue. Make sure you stay glued to this channel. Share it. Get others to like it. And let it go all over. So that salvation will come to many. This is Rainer's World Incorporated. The Dasco Movement with Minister Higher Life. God bless you.